and then felt on this side of the magnets. So and it cleans. Look at that. Wow. Clean the, clean the glass. No, I want to get the tentacles. Well, wait. Okay, he'll come. Out. He'll come out. They'll move around. When they oh, get you can see him a little bit back there. Down. And that's a starfish. Yeah. If you look here, look down here, and look up from this angle. Oh, with all those legs. Yeah. You can see his oh, the yeah. center of his body is right up there. That's he's a star. Draped himself over Looks like an octopus. Yeah. So he's kind of he octopus. Moves like an octopus too, but he's actually a starfish, type of starfish, called a brittle star. Or in this case, he's called a serpent. What are these blue things down here? They're beautiful. Those are called mushroom anemones. Oh. So you can imagine this animal, right? Your basic sea anemone, only mm -hmm. with all the legs fused together into a disc. That's what that would be. And there's five or six species. It's almost as if they know you're going to feed them. They're all moving well, around. Right. Yeah. You recognize the sound. Let me futz around down here. I guess yeah. dinner time. The yellowfish wasn't even out. What's that yellowfish called? He's pretty. He's called cool. a yellow tang. It's part of the. He reminds me fish. of what's the fish in um, the Disney movie called? I can't remember now. Finding Nemo. Yeah. Finding Nemo. There was a yellow tang in Finding Nemo. Sure. This really pretty purple one here. The royal grandma. Blue now the starfish in here is moving around. Oh, yeah, I see it. What's that? That is a Pacific cleaner shrimp. That's Sometimes a shrimp. called a, 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 a skunk shrimp. And he will hang out on the rocks and wave those big white tentacles in the air and advertise but he's a cleaning station, and the fish will come over and sidle up to him and let him crawl around in, on their skin and wow. pick the pick the scales. Or what kinds of little whatever. guys hanging around in there? So, so his, is that starfish going to come out more? Is he that about it? I think that's about it. Look at the tentacles. Look at him. If he was hungrier, he would be more active. House sitters overfed the tank a little bit. So. This guy here, what kind of fish is the purple and yellow one? The yellow, t he's called a, a royal grandma, G R A M A. Hmm. Here's one of the hermit crabs, he's, he's got busy. Woke him up. Look up underneath this hole here. There's a little sea urchin, a little pincushion urchin. Oh, I see dark. him. Yeah. Can I hardly see him in the back there, there with the with the needle sticking down. Yeah. Yeah. He spends most of his time crawling around deep in the in the reef. So what does he eat? He eats off the reef in the back. He, eats, he scrapes algae off the surface of the rock. There's a rock there. Or something. New stuff can colonize the rock. And there's something back there that's. Everything in here is alive. That's incredible. And the surface is covered with something. Like that. Wow. And this is all coral. Uh huh. And it's alive. And that's right. That's called a Montiporia <clears throat> capricornis. Gosh, it's beautiful. The orange. And the, red, the next one up is a purple-lipped uh, Montipora. And then the terrace above that is a brown Montipora that actually grew. But gets, it got so big that the flakes that were growing out actually broke off under their own weight. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get some frags to give away. Now, is that so a shrimp? That's back. the shrimp down there. Is that the same guy we just saw on the other side? Well, it could be. There are two of them in there. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a different kind of shrimp. That's a, that one's called a peppermint shrimp. They're a scavenger. They're mostly nocturnal. You don't see much of them. There are five or six of them in there. Huh. They live in the crevices in the rock. And they'll come out to feed. 
part of the cleanup crew, basically. This cluster of animals, this is a sea pen, um, is the common name, and Thelia is the genus. Hmm. And, uh, it grows very aggressively <laughs> throughout the tank. It's like one of those you, you let it run wild for a while and then you have to harvest it back. These are oh, this little guy is kind of interesting. This little looks like a grasshopper fish there. Mm. Mm. It's called a lawnmower blenny. He's an algae eater. He's got this big wide mouth and scrapes, big wide bite, scrapes the algae off the glass, off of the rocks. Basic uh, Florida long tentacled anemone. These guys can live to 100 years in the world. Here comes again. And these specific cleaner shrimp. Look at them. They're, <clears throat> there's both of them. They're both out. One at the yeah, top, one well, at the bottom. We, we call them the gay boys because when they, they grow to a certain size, they have to molt like any... They have to molt their exoskeleton like mm. any other arthropod. And after the molt, when the, the undershell is still soft, they can be inseminated. And uh, the collected eggs underneath the swimmerettes under their abdomen. And then the, sh the shell hardens and the the eggs actually mature under the swimmerettes, and uh, so the animal goes through this female phase until the the fry actually uh, get large enough to spawn, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, they they they're released into the water, where they promptly become snack for everybody else in the tank. Well, then when it's the other turn, the other shrimp's turn to molt. They reverse roles and switch genders. One becomes the male. What was the female becomes the male, inseminates the what was the male now the female, and now she carries a clutch of eggs and they go back they alternate. And there's a tentacle sticking out there from the starfish. You could barely see it in the back. Uh -huh. There's a the tentacle. Zoanthids. These things that look like little flowers with yellow petals. And the blue is it's called a candy cane coral. And that's an SPS. How stony. many types of coral are in here? Coral. I haven't counted them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine species of hard coral. And boy, I have to count the soft ones. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. See, this one's captured some food and it's closed up on What is it? This one of these disc animals here always has and a And it just bird. closed up and he's eating something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's folded up his tentacles. So that's this blue one down here. It's it's real, uh, closely related. These are both mushroom anemones. And that guy just closed up and is eating something. Right? Yeah, so he's, he's digesting. So this is a cluster of another variety of the same kind of morphology. I loved your analogy earlier that this is the bottom of the ocean and what would happen if you dumped a teaspoon of oil into this tank? Yeah, a teaspoon, let alone. What are they estimating now? 80 million barrels, yeah. 55 gallons each. Oh, that's, yeah. And what is this tank called? You, you told me yesterday. It's, a, it's a, a reef aquarium. It's based primarily on a Florida Keys reef community, hmm. loosely. 
that's where the bass rock and a lot of the, the, the hard corals came from. But there are some exotics in there from other places. That we, so what do you do? You, you buy them and then you put them in there? Yeah, you can do that. You get to a certain point, though, where mostly you, you go to swap meets and trade. And of course, you know, stuff that I have excess of, I'll, I'll trade for new things that I don't have. Mm-hmm. Stuff that grows really well for me. Every tank is unique. It's, you know, the equipment is different. The water chemistry is a little different. The light's always a little different. So different people will have different success with different species. And uh, there's a group here in, in Denver called the Dark Denver Area Reef Club that once a month has it. Every couple of months they get together and have a swap meet. You take your extra frags and stuff that you've had to prune or whatever and trade horse trade with other reef keepers and, and call themselves reefers actually. <laughs> and uh, pretty soon you've got a situation where you don't have any you don't have any space for anything new. <laughs> so that guy opened back up there. Yeah, he's in the process of opening back up. A big flake of food landed on his tentacles, and he folded right up, up on hmm. himself to pass the, the food to the center where the mouth is. Hmm. And he ingested it, and he'll digest it, and then spit it back out the same way it went in. That's what's left. <laughs>